Hi, my name is Murtaza Haider, and I'm a professor at the Ted Rogers School of Management at Toronto Metropolitan University. I'm also the Associate Dean of Graduate Programs. And one of my interests has been to see how artificial intelligence can be integrated into learning and pedagogy. And there are multiple views about it. Many uh, people think it's a good idea, and even a larger number maybe thinks that it may not be a great idea. And my point of view is that it is becoming increasingly difficult to ignore artificial intelligence. It's becoming very pervasive. And not only that, uh, with each new day, the technology is becoming more integrated with things that you've used in the past. Now, for this video, I just want to show what uh, Microsoft has done with Office 365. It is now called Microsoft Office 365 Copilot, and AI is now embedded in it. Now, you have used tools like Microsoft Word for decades, and you've seen it develop first with uh, spell check and then formatting and then grammar and editing, and now artificial intelligence. And now if you start Microsoft Word, AI is right there. So I'm gonna take a minute to illustrate how it's working. Let's see, um, share, I say share my screen. Microsoft Word, you launch it and you'll see that there's a co-pilot button there. And then you also see with a new document, every new document you will open with Microsoft Word and co-pilot, you'll see it says select the icon or press Alt I. I'm gonna select an icon and I wanna write something with AI. So I'm going to write something with it. I'm basically, I'm generating a memo. And a memo is to say, um, gen, write a memo or draft a memo advising the staff that the use of AI is not permitted to or not permitted for any office communication. Essentially, I'm writing, drafting an AI generated memo to advise others not to use AI. So this is it, and draft a memo advising the staff that the use of or that AI is not permitted for any office communication or for office communication. You notice that the Grammarly is also running and it's also suggesting changes. So I've made those uh, changes right away and I'm now using another AI, which is Copilot and drafting a memo. I just click on generate, just give it a small prompt and said, draft a memo. And there you go, the memo has been drafted. It says, um, dear team, I hope this memo finds you well. I'm writing to inform you of an important policy update regarding our office communication practices. Effective immediately, the use of AI tools and applications for office communication is prohibited. Look at how good AI is to telling others that don't use AI. This decision has been made to ensure integrity, security, and confidentiality of our internal and external communications and go on and go on, so on and so forth and it goes on. I can put my name here, say keep it, and then it accepts the document. I could have gone back and forth and improving it, but the bottom line is that AI has just in a matter of seconds generated a memo advising others not to use AI. And it's pretty much a decent memo. It says we encourage you all to rely on human interaction and traditional communication methods and so on and so forth. So, okay. so now I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second. And what is the point we are trying to make here? The point is that AI is here to stay. It's going to become more and more ubiquitous. It's going to be available um, through um, different sources. Google will enable it in using Gemini in Gmail and Google Docs. Um, already in Microsoft Office Outlook, um, um, you can use AI to respond to your emails. And all of this is happening. The question is for us as academics um, or as managers of research or managers in the real world, uh, professional world, helping people understand, people who work with us understand that there's an ethical and moral way of using it. We want to use this technology to increase our productivity without compromising ethics and morals and academic standards and whatnot. And in case of a, a professional world, you, you have um, restrictions on what could be shared on cloud with others and giving up information um, to AI that would take it up in the cloud and then and keep it in the, in the corpus forever. That may not be a good strategy. So basically we have to teach or share best practices with our students, with our staff, with our colleagues on how to use AI, but AI is becoming more and more ubiquitous. Microsoft Word with AI is not gonna go away. It's gonna be there. It's up to us to see how we can help others use it productively. Again, my name is Murtaza Hirer, and this is our moment with AI and Microsoft Word.